Welcome to video number 10 in a series of 16, where I'll share what the Jungian functions look like in their Nardian flavors, adding specifically how they might show up in romantic relationships. If you're watching the series, there will be some repetition, but in case this is the one and only video you watch, I want you to have all the information. So feel free to make use of the chapter markers in the description. My main references for this video are Carl Gustav Jung and Dr. Dario Nardi. Jung was a Swiss psychiatrist who published his theory of psychological types in 1921. And Dario is a university professor, prolific researcher and author. He found evidence of psychological types in the neuroscience data captured by EEG assessments he's been doing with people from all walks of life since 2006. And in case we haven't met, my name is Doris Fulgrava. I'm a certified coach with a master's in applied psychology, and I help people create happier, healthier relationships. A couple of caveats before we begin, just to manage expectations. And again, in case this is the only video you see. Number one, these videos describe the functions in their purest state. Functions rarely show up in their purest state as they interact with other functions and your brain is really active doing multiple things at any given time, like it's regulating your body temperature and heart rate right now. So you may not resonate with 100% of the description of this function 100% of the time, and that is okay. Number two, these videos describe the function for this function type. You may not be this particular function type, which means this function may not be at the top or dominant in your consciousness. That's okay too, because it's still in your system. You still have access to it and paying attention to this function may help you recognize when it pops up out of your subconscious so you can practice integrating it consciously. With that, we're going to talk about the function first, thinking, and then the function attitude, extroverted thinking, and then the flavor, holistic extroverted thinking, and finally, how it shows up in dating, mating, and relating. So the thinking function is one of the two rational judging functions. Rational because it involves reasoning, i.e. a process of reflection, and judging because it's about making decisions. The thinking function helps us be logical, analytical, effective, and efficient, it gives us the ability to plan ahead and a curiosity about how things work. It is committed to justice and equality, fairness and intellectual freedom, but also step-by-step -step rules that lead to a specific result. Dr. Linda Behrens describes it in this way. Thinking is a process of evaluating and making judgments based on objective criteria and principles or logic. Using this process, we detach ourselves from our values and seek to make decisions based on principles alone. Activities like discrimination according to a set of criteria or objectively defined standards, analysis according to a set of principles, logic and cause-effect reasoning are all examples of making thinking judgments. Moving on to the function attitude, extroverted thinking, which is the dominant function for ENTJ and ESTJ types. What follows are Jung's words and his language from 100 years ago is a little different from how we speak today. He's quite male centric, so he uses he him when describing all functions that are in feeling types. He also uses the word object to describe anything and anyone outside of you and subject to refer to you yourself or the person. According to Jung, a dominant extroverted thinking type will be someone whose constant endeavor is to make all his activities dependent on intellectual conclusions, which are always oriented by objective data, whether those be facts or ideas. This reality-based objective intellectual formula is then applied as a ruling principle to themselves and their environment. Everything that agrees with the formula is right, everything that contradicts it is wrong, and anything that passes by it indifferently is merely incidental. Those who refuse to obey these laws are wrong, unreasonable, immoral, and without conscience. More than that, his moral code forbids him to tolerate exceptions. His ideal must under all circumstances be realized, for in his eyes it is the purest conceivable formulation of objective reality, and therefore must also be a universally valid truth, quite indispensable for the salvation of mankind. The general motive is justice and truth, and if the formula is broad enough to also include some feeling, special provisions will be made for humane societies, hospitals, prisons, missions, etc. The more rigid the formula, or the more one-sided the extroverted thinking type, the less agreeable they become. Although Jung does add, 
Usually it is the nearest relatives who have to taste the unpleasant consequences of the extroverted formula since they are the first to receive its relentless benefits. But in the end, it is the subject himself who suffers most. Why? Because there can be no all-encompassing intellectual formula that could embrace the manifold possibilities of life. You have to make allowances, right? So, Jung also says that the more feeling content is repressed, like friendships, aesthetics, creativity, the more these contents are pushed into the subconscious, the more likely they are to come out in unethical ways. He gives the examples of guardians of public morals who suddenly find themselves in compromising situations, or rescue workers who are themselves in dire need of rescue, or idealists so consumed by their desire for the salvation of mankind that they will not shrink from any lie or trickery. I think we can all think of examples for that. Jung also says that rigidity of extroverted thinking leads to prejudices and a readiness to misconstrue any opposition to his formula as personal ill will. So these are types whose thinking has become dogmatic and it's made them a little tyrannical and paranoid. Luckily, most individuals instinctively allow themselves to modify those formulas with a suitably rationalistic guise and it doesn't tend to get that far. Also, on the plus side, extroverted thinking is productive. It leads to factual discoveries based on empirical data. And even when it analyzes, it constructs. So it's neither stagnant nor regressive, but has a progressive and creative quality to it. So much for the function and the function attitude. Now we're moving into the flavor. Dario analyzed EEG data from his participants and found two distinct brain wirings. The one we're looking at here is the holistic style or flavor, which is focused on getting input and going with the flow. It's more open-ended and looks like patience and relaxation. That's not to say it's flaky. It considers all aspects at once, which allows it to connect ideas in fresh and new ways. Its approach is bottom up, open to discovery and synergy, wherever the data might lead. People of the style like to find new tools and solutions and are so aware of their own biases they might lack the confidence to make a change. The style is often more auditory. It pays attention to how things are said, but also ethics, intentions and emotions. Thinking is often figurative and might focus on identity and values, and they often describe using metaphors. In business, it's most comfortable with an egalitarian and collaborative approach, and likely careers for those with a holistic style include the creative arts, social services, humanistic pursuits, soft sciences, and multiculturalism. Dario calls the holistic extroverted thinking type the builder. The builder is a helpful hard worker who's more receptive and flexible than their analytic siblings. Diffuse extroverted thinking is about paying attention to a lot of small details across all departments in this business of life and not just one or two big items. This shows up as efficiency, thriftiness and taking responsibility for getting things done. These types focus on doing the right work and doing the work right, and they're comfortable dealing with loads of details like facts, charts, or diagrams. In fact, they enjoy setting up templates and frameworks to optimize functionality for all those facts, charts, and diagrams. They're comfortable with different forms of complexity and multiple projects, and they do avoid distractions. Dario describes this holistic kind of extroverted thinking as quietly crafting a fine watch under moonlight. So everything is in working order, ticking away smoothly. And where analytic extroverted thinking focuses on speed and profit, holistic extroverted thinking prioritizes usefulness and accuracy. I have an addition in terms of uh, caveats for the relationship portion of this information based on a comment I saw last week. I want to preface this and the following videos by saying that all types can and do have relationships with all other types. Just like you wouldn't hire an employee based on their type, you shouldn't choose a partner solely based on their type either, because people are so much more complex than that. Still, type, I think, is the best framework to understand and then bridge our differences no matter who you're with. Also, to my knowledge, there is no reliable statistical research into people's types and sexual preferences as yet, so what I suggest may or may not resonate. However, if you'd like to take part in such research, please email me. Okay, in dating, you're probably attracted to this type's vibe of having their life together and figured out or the ability to figure it out in the near future. 
During dinner, you might talk about three to five to ten year plans. And if by date number two, you feel like you're on some kind of job interview, you just might be. As Dario puts it, builders like to optimize functionality and arrange everything in boxes and along procedures. They easily manage relationships the same way, boxes and procedures. Because of their efficiency, they won't like to waste time. So these types are not likely to string you along if they don't see things going anywhere. In the bedroom, I can imagine these types have different sexy vibes for different occasions. For example, the quickie, the leisurely Sunday morning, the date night, the makeup sex, etc. I see specific lingerie sets, aromatic candles, and calendar invites for when the couple or polycule gets busy. When describing the function, Dario mentioned that an element beyond building for this type is maintaining and thinking ahead about how to keep things functional. So I think people of this type recognize the importance of sex in their relationship and will make sure it doesn't get neglected over time. As a partner, you will have someone who will happily take charge of organizing your lives and making most of the decisions. They don't tend to be overly romantic, but they'll be reliable, dependable and practical life partners. You'll always have progress updates to add to your holiday family newsletter and you'll be welcome additions to any communal society or charitable organization. Communication with your builder types will be detail oriented and respectful and conflict is probably geared towards solving multiple concrete problems at a time. Again, this information is meant as an overview of the function and its holistic flavor. It cannot describe all the nuances and individual idiosyncrasies, but I hope you now have a better idea. If you think you have a holistic extroverted thinking preference or a partner of that type, please add your comments below. Until then, thanks so much for watching. Feel free to check out this video next and I'll see you there.